Good afternoon once again. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 546. And the title today is How You Done With Fair Weather Relationships. And I'll get to that in a moment. I'll start with introducing myself and explain the sound of my nose <laughs> and explain the context for today's talk. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women attract and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for pretty much two years now, getting close to it, I've done these talks, and for the majority of them, mid daily talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And these talks are basically in the theme conversation around relationships, masculine and feminine polarity, men and women, and beyond. It's not just that, but that's the main framework. So today's one um, is kind of based on, I did a talk yesterday about, uh, was yesterday? I think it was yesterday, till death to us part. No, no, excuse me, it wasn't that one. It was, I said, it was that a different topic. The topic was, is sickness and health? Because I'm dealing with a, with a sinus cold. Um, it's getting better, much better than yesterday, and better than the day before that. I was considering how it feels for people who don't want to go deep. So this is kind of on the same level, but different, because I want to go in a different direction with this. And because also, because it rained big time today, thank God, finally we get some rain. Um, Although my prayers are with those in Malibu and surrounding areas, which are maybe affected by mudslides now, because once you get the fires, then you get the mudslides, so not fun for them. But I wanted to speak to this, that's what, hence the fair weather title. I mean, I was thinking about the weather, so like, fair weather, oh, there's a title. I get inspiration from the weirdest places. So the topic today is more about the framework. Well, let me put it this way. I'm sure if you're like me, you've had some, you have had or you still have some fair weather friends who disappear when they feel like it. And they're very unreliable. But you can't even depend upon them. Let's bring that closer into relationship because there are people who get into relationship who are like that too. And they're, um, it's like they have one foot in, one foot out, or they have, they're in the relationship with their hands on the door the whole time, reaching out to grab the door. It's very hard to trust people like that. And if you've been in a relationship with people like that, um, First, you have my condolences, and I want to speak to you about some solutions because it's fun, not fun to live there or be there. So if you've been in relationships or have, are in relationships, relationship, singular, with someone who is a fair weather partner, meaning that they don't have your best interests as their priority, not their top priority, because I've talked about this before, how self-support is top priority, supporting your partner second. Because like the oxygen mask on planes, you can't help yourself if you don't help, if you can't help others to help yourself first. So... Making you a priority, as in above other things, but not before, not beyond everything else. Cause I've made that mistake myself, where I made my partner report in everything, including myself, wasn't healthy. So self-support first, then your partner. Now, if you rate on your partner's priority list way down the scale, and there could be other things, like if you're if you're in a relationship with somebody who has kids and they're not your kids, the kids may have come up higher priority than you. That um, that's understandable. But when their job is a priority, that's one thing. Kids are not a priority. Their hobbies and friends are priorities. But when it's convenient stuff where it's like washing the car's a priority versus going with you, you might want to check on where your commitment level is, where your commitment level is from them to you. Because because we sometimes get, um, I won't say fooled is the wrong word, but we do get to a point in relationships often where we get comfortable and we start relaxing we, we don't notice the creep of that um, fair weather response that creeps into the relationship. Like in the beginning, it's like all or nothing. We're all in it together. We can make it happen. And as a few months go by, the level of commitment is like, mm, yeah, I'll get around to it. That range, that spectrum, that, that difference, I don't know what there's a term. I was going to call it the creep. But that's not a good term. But it's that sense of people not being willing to stay by their original in commitments and agreements to stay in relationship. And that's the fair weather bit. There's also another spin on that, which is the oh, the bunch of words that Gina and I were talking about the other week when I was doing a Facebook Live with her. We do a Tuesday night broadcast, or not the Tuesday because I was sick. Um, and we talked about submarining, boomerang, submarining, boomerang, ghosting, a bunch of other terms. Yeah, the creep. Yeah, just an idea, you know, Fernanda. So it's an idea. Um, but th those are also ways that people become fair weather. In the dating arena, before a real relationship, the terms that have um, um, sprouted recently and all these different terms of dating mishaps and communication um, degradation 
things like ghosting um there's say submarining um boomerang um what the other ones there's like five other ones there's, there's a list of terms basically if you go on if you go on social media or if you go on frankly if you go on to google and search for the different dating mishap terms i'm sure i'd find some put some more in the comments because there's a lot out there and all of those i believe maybe could be summarized under the heading of fair weather so when you're dating somebody and they keep disappearing on you that's the energetic and basically it's nothing about you it's them let's be clear about that um so in a, but in a relationship which is a different level it's harder to it's harder to do that sort of reaction of being ghosting with somebody when you're in a relationship with them but it, as a joke thank you for Fernando for, for laughing about that the, the creep creeping from all-in commitment to i'll get around to it when i feel like it happens i've been there myself i've done it myself i've been treated that way myself so i've been on all three of those and i don't um well, I, say, I, don't, I don't respect it I, I understand it i don't necessarily i don't like it for sure so what to do about it frankly the biggest thing we forget to do is talk to communicate to actually invite a conversation was that fernando agreed i have listened you know, love listening to your videos and they make a lot of sense to me thank you fernando i appreciate that i'm glad you do get value from it and enjoy them so the biggest thing we forget to do is have a conversation, especially in a relationship when you're already in, when you're past the dating stage, where all the weirdness happens and that sort of, that um, close, far distance type stuff happens in connection and communication. When you have a relationship that's ideally got a basis of communication to start with, but it fades over time, you can get back to the original place by having a conversation. Now, you may not like what you hear, but at least you'll be clear about it. Because the thing about it is, that creep wisdom I mentioned is basically because of assumptions and it's because of forgetfulness. By having a conversation, you can reduce the forgetfulness and bring back the memory of like, why are we in this relationship? I mean, the result literally is to get a, it's almost like a make or break conversation. Because if you're being treated like a fair weather partner, you're not getting what you want in a relationship, rather than just put up with it and rather than just quitting the relationship, which may be the option you want to do, let's have a conversation first. Be willing to talk to your partner to actually get clear what's going on for them. Are they in a place where they're just comfortable? Are they having a challenge where they can't step up? Have they given up on the relationship? Um, do they not feel free like they did beginning, at the beginning? Which is quite possible, people do that. Get clear about what's going on. Because you may find that relationship is meant to happen anyways. Maybe it's time to cut, cut your losses and leave. But then again, maybe they've just gotten off track and they've gotten so caught up in some other thing they haven't talked about that you had no idea. And when you have the conversation, it just reconnects everything back to the beginning again. So for me, I think the best recommendation I give you is to have that conversation. And and do it from, and I've talked about this before, having conversations from the place of ownership is the healthiest place to start from. Because when you sit in a relationship with your partner who's been treating you that way, and if you start going, you did this and you did this and you didn't do that and all these different things, they're likely to get defensive. And I said before, the truth about communica communication is a lot of times when we communicate, we're, commu we're communicating to attack versus actually to speak from our truth. So what you can do what I recommend you do is speak from your own experience so if they're disappearing on you and they're not making you a priority saying say some of the lines of maybe maybe something lines of like I feel like this relationship I'm not feeling like I'm full participant and I'm not sure if something going on for you or if just a gap between us what it is I don't know that's not blaming that's expressing what's true and that shift in communication skills which is a lot of what I talked about recently is vital if you want to have healthy relationships because you've got to be able to talk to your partner as a equal partner versus somebody you're gonna throw the blame on and dump on and judge and make make wrong. Because that is a trap. And even if they have been doing it intentionally because they don't want to bother with it, if you call them to account by being honest and standing up for yourself, if they choose to do something other than meet you in that place and communication, you already have your answer. If they attack you for what you said and saying it's wrong, that's a big clue to leave. If they don't know what happened and going, I don't care, I don't think about it, that's another clue to leave. See, that conversation can give you several different pathways from it, but the truth is you won't know until you get there what those pathways will be, and you won't know which is the right one until you have the conversation. So in in a very short order, I'm basically I've covered the whole thing. Um, <laughs> the, this conversation, this, this discussion, this understanding is that relationships can change over time. But if you find yourself perpetually in relationships that get to that point quickly 
like the fair weather energy happens where it's like laissez fair, don't really care, not so invested, not committed, not showing affection all the time, not being loving all the time. There may be something you want to work on yourself. Because the thing about relationships when you have several relationships, after a period of time, the common threads are yours, not theirs. Meaning that if you've been out with five, six, seven people over the last several years and the same relationship experience happens 99% of the time, it's nothing to do with them. Yeah, I know that sounds horrible, but the reality is very clearly that you're carrying the same baggage for each of those relationships. And as I mentioned before about baggage, it's no fun for them and it's no fun for you. So if you're having that experience where the fair weather energy happens perpetually in different relationships, it's a good time to look inside. And maybe when you're out of that relationship, or maybe when you're in it, depending where you are, if you're realizing you don't want to throw another relationship away, maybe it's a good time to do the work. And if you're out of that relationship, definitely a good time to do the work. And the work I'm talking about is get some coaching, get some support, get some clarity on what's going on, going on for you, unpack what those issues are, and get support so you can heal those patterns once and for all. So then you step into a relationship, you step far beyond and above the fair weather experience and you have a relationship that fulfills you to the highest level. That's my um, wish for you and my encouragement that you can have that because all of us can have a relationship that's so immersive, so complete, so fully embracing that we become our best selves. So with that, I'll leave you with that thought. I'll put, some links in, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so you can find out more about my work offline. We can talk and actually have a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation so you can get some clarity and know what's really going on. And also say about my holiday specials that are still running because I still have a few of those going. I still have some room on a couple of them. And also, um, because it's the holiday season and we forget to do this stuff, I'm going to put a note in there about the self-love practice because, frankly, for many people out there, loving themselves is the last thing they do. And as I said earlier, it should be the first thing you do. So self-love first, then love other people. Same thing in relationships. So with that, I think that summarizes it. By the way, this is the Facebook Live first, which is why if you're watching this on YouTube, you're wondering where are those comments coming from. Facebook Live first, then YouTube, then on podcast. I'll give you the links for those. On my business page on Facebook is where my, all my archives of these go. So you can go find them all on barryselby.author on Facebook. Then I put them onto YouTube, which is the channel is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel. And all the lists, all there, they're in uh, newest to oldest. So from the from the most recent broadcast, all the way back to number one. That's a lot of a lot of videos to watch. If you get really want to get uh, bored with my voice, I don't know. You can you can check them out. Um, and also my podcast, which is on iTunes, which is also called Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe subscribe to that channel. Um, they're slowly getting out there, so you can listen to them when you're driving around more easily, perhaps than when you're doing what you know, other things. Again, your opportunity is step up yourself to own your own stuff and to choose clearly what you want. Have that conversation, find out where the relationship's gonna go and then choose in or out as is needed and, and take the right steps. Get the help you need, have amazing relationships, live your life fully. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I hope by tomorrow my son is cold to be more gone so I sound more like myself. Still, still a bit muffled on my end. Thanks for watching, thanks for being with me. I'll see you again soon. Bye.